Hey everybody, welcome back to Techmark Gaming and Reviews. I'm breaking down the top 10 iOS 26 settings that you need to change right now to make your iPhone feel smoother, faster, and easier to use. I'm currently on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, but everything that I'm showing you in this video works on every device that's running iOS 26. Now, before we get into it, be sure to smash that like button and comment below and let me know if you guys are enjoying iOS 26. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Techmark Gaming and Reviews so I could be recommended to more tech enthusiasts like yourself. In the meantime, let's get into it. So first up is the new screenshot tool inside of iOS 26. If you guys recently updated from iOS 18, then you know that when you screenshot, it'll have a thumbnail at the bottom left corner. But now when you screenshot, you get a preview that pops up, which is gonna block everything. It's cool, but it really slows you down if you're trying to take multiple screenshots back to back. If you wanna make it that classic iOS 18 style, then I got you. So we're gonna go ahead and go back, go into settings, and on the search bar, we're gonna type in screenshot. We're gonna click this option here. And as you can see, we have full screen previews turned on. So we're gonna go ahead and disable that. And we're gonna slide back over to something that we wanna screenshot. And as you guys can see, it has that thumbnail at the bottom left corner, which is what we want. So now we can go ahead and screenshot multiple pages and then we can still go ahead and click this thumbnail here and it's gonna bring up that preview. So you can see all of the screenshots that we just took so we can go ahead and share it, do markup, save it or delete them. Next up, we gotta fix the liquid glass effect. iOS 26 add these transparent frosted elements across the OS, folders, docs, control centers, app store tabs, even inside the music application. Sometimes it looks too transparent and things can get hard to read. So let's go ahead and fix that. We're gonna go into the settings application, go down to display and brightness, and you will see liquid glass, click into that, and you will see clear. We're gonna set this to tinted so we can see the icons a lot better. Then we're gonna take this a step further and go back. We're gonna click into accessibilities and display and text size. You should see reduced transparency. We're gonna turn this on. We're also gonna turn on increased contrast, which is basically gonna give you a more darker effect so you can see your icons a lot better. So we're gonna take a look at this. If we go to the home screen, you can instantly tell that the dock is a lot easier to see and it has a nice shade to it. If you go into the folders, we also get the same effect, which is good for a lot of people out there that's been complaining about the liquid glass design. The control center is also easier to see. Inside the app store, you can see the icons at the bottom more clearly. Inside the control center, I'm gonna turn off dark mode so you guys can see how it looks with light mode on. And I gotta say, this reminds me of iOS 18 and I'm really digging it. Now you can go back and play with these settings by turning off increased contrast and you'll start to see a little bit more of liquid glass being introduced without it being so overkill. If we go to the home screen, you can see that we have a more frosted look on a dock, folders, and widgets. You will also notice whenever you open up sub menus, you will see that we can actually see the text without it being transparent. And if you take screenshots, you can see that we have a more darker effect that's gonna shrink into the bottom left corner. And then when you open up that preview menu, we have a more darker background. And I gotta say, this is so much more better on the eyes, even with notifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off reduced transparency. And as you can see, we can see directly through the notification, which could be a little bit irritating, especially if you got a lot going on with your wallpaper. So go ahead and play with these settings and see how you like it. Next up is bring devices together. So I'm gonna go into my settings and then I'm gonna go to the search bar and type in bring devices together. I'm gonna click this. And as you guys can see, we're in an airdrop menu and where it says bring devices together, I have this turned off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and show you why I actually don't like this. So if I wanna set my phone down next to my Apple Watch, it's automatically gonna enable this feature. And in most cases, I'm not using it to transfer information directly to somebody else's phone. So this is something that I always keep off most of the time. Next up is shake to undo. So say for instance, I'm texting or I'm typing something in my notes app while I'm walking or going down some stairs, I'm gonna go ahead and recreate some movement. And as you can see, we get this pop-up that says undo typing, which in most cases I don't wanna undo them. So I'll go ahead and hit that cancel button, which is gonna take me out the whole flow. If I wanna undo something, I can just use this three finger gesture and swipe backwards and it's gonna go ahead and undo this. And if I wanna redo something, I'll just use the three finger gesture forward and it will go ahead and do so. These are super easy to perform once you get used to it. To disable Shake to Undo, we're gonna go into the settings application, then we're gonna search Shake to Undo and you will see this pop up here. We're gonna click this and you should now see Shake to Undo. We're gonna disable this toggle so you don't be interrupted while you're typing. Super clutch. 
Next up, for the folks out there that want to save more storage on their devices, this is the best way to do so. So we're going to go into our settings, general and iPhone storage, and you will now see a full breakdown of how much storage your iPhone actually has. Now, the most important part is under recommendations. So you should see offload unused applications. And as you guys can see, I have tons of applications here, but some of them I'm not actually using. And it's been a while since I actually used it, which could be taking up so much data on my phone. So I want to go ahead and clear this up for more storage. So I'm gonna click enable and it's gonna go ahead and automatically clean up these applications that I haven't used in a long time. And this is gonna be using machine learning. So if you haven't been using these applications, then your phone is gonna automatically do this without you having to think about it. So if you scroll down, you will see that there's some that's already offloaded. If I click into that, you will see that we can actually reinstall the application or delete it. In most cases, I like to delete it if I'm not using it. So if you got free time, just go through your applications, clean these up so you can have more storage for music, photos, or whatever you like. Next, let's go ahead and protect your hearing. So we're gonna go into the settings and scroll down until we see sound and haptics. And then we're gonna scroll down once more until we see built-in speaker, volume limit, and reduce loud sounds. So in most cases, I like to have both of these enabled first with the reduced loud sounds. So basically when you have audio in your headphones or on your phone, it's gonna go ahead and turn down that loud spike of audio that could potentially be irritating or damaging your eardrums. Next, we're gonna go into volume limit. And as you can see, I have volume limit turned on and I have this turned all the way down to 20%. Typically, I don't need to hear my phone consistently at 100% all the time. And in most cases, if I get on social media, that thing is gonna be blurring out my speakers and is basically gonna keep irritating and just damaging my eardrums over time. So I highly recommend that you guys turn this thing on because this is gonna be a lifesaver because sadly years from now, people are gonna be experiencing hearing loss a lot more. So now was the best time to utilize this feature and give your ears a break. I keep mine around 20 to 40% and I can still hear my phone clearly. Next is for the people out there that like to use Siri. So if you go into your settings, scroll down to Apple Intelligence and Siri, then voice, you'll see that we have different accents that we can choose from and different voices. So you can choose between Australian, British, Indian, Irish, South African, and many others. It's gonna download the voice first and then you'll be able to hear them. So give this a try. Something else inside of Siri is basically having ChatGPT support. Under extensions, you'll see that we can add our ChatGPT account which essentially is gonna pull in information from ChatGPT when you ask it questions that Siri can't answer. Up next, if you got a device that supports the camera control button, fix this ASAP. We're gonna go into settings and find camera. At the top, you'll see camera control. We're gonna click into that menu. At the top, we have camera control. That's gonna open up the camera itself. As you can see, you can open up different applications, but I prefer the camera and I'm gonna show you why. So let's go back. I have this set to single click compared to a double click for easy access. If we scroll down a bit, by default, you'll see launch visual intelligence already selected. So I have this unselected for a reason. So essentially, I don't use this feature. So if I turn it on and press the camera control, it's gonna launch up visual intelligence so I can take a picture of something and it's gonna use AI to search the internet to give me more details about whatever I took a picture of, which is pretty cool, but I necessarily don't use it. And I really think that this will be a good camera button. So I'm gonna go back and turn the setting off but I will keep the camera control adjustments so I can zoom in or out of pictures or videos. So let's see this in action. All I gotta do is press the camera control button and it's gonna go ahead and pull up my camera app so I can either take pictures or videos on the fly. Now that's way more convenient. Next is for the people out there that like to see their battery percentage. By default, this is off. So we're gonna go into the settings, click battery, if you look at the bottom, you'll see battery percentage. So we're gonna go ahead and enable this toggle. And at the top right corner, you should see a battery percentage, which is pretty cool. Now here's a quick bonus. If you go into power mode, you will see that we have adaptive power, which essentially is gonna use AI and machine learning to help your battery life extend throughout the day, like adjusting the screen brightness, turning off some features in the background without you having to go to low power mode. You can also turn on a notification so you know when this feature is active. And one last tip for the people out there that wanna save more battery. So inside your settings, you're gonna type in background and you'll see background app refresh, click that. And then we're gonna click into this menu here and we're either gonna turn it off or on Wi-Fi. Essentially, what it's doing is keeping applications running in the background. So whenever you wanna go into the application after a long period, it's gonna be ready for you. But realistically, this drains tons of battery, especially if you're out there on the go and you wanna preserve battery, you can choose off or just Wi-Fi. 
Now, as you guys can see, I got a Mofi battery case. This thing is super clutch because I can easily activate it, which is going to give me an additional 50% battery life without needing a cable or extra battery banks. If you guys want to check this out, then I'll leave a card in the top right corner of this video for the full review and a link in the description. All right, so those are my top 10 iOS 26 settings that you need to change right now, plus some bonus tips if your battery's been draining faster than usual. If you guys found this video valuable, be sure to smash that like button and comment what your favorite iOS 26 feature is. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Techmark Gaming and Reviews so I can be recommended to more tech enthusiasts like yourself. In the meantime, I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care. Deuces.